Okay, hello everyone. So everyone is watching us. Um, so this this time I will present uh, chapter 11, which is layers. Um, we'll discuss more about, um, it's the continuation of discussion about the visualization and uh, chapter two and uh, the, layered, the layered grammar of graphics. So this is the main objective of this, uh, this chapter, just continuation uh, to, to know more about visual, how to use R uh, to visualize uh, data and specifically ggplot to, uh, in, to, to, uh, to just have um, like have know the tool more and uh, know what what is the layers that we could you we built upon uh, when we use when when we do our analysis. So yeah, this is um, so let's let's dive in. Okay. So. So this chapter actually this, uh, has been presented in, in cohort seven uh, just like two two days ago. So I'm I'm just using their uh, their presentations, it's, which, uh, which is super super helpful and uh, thoughtful also. Um, the first thing, um, so it talks about in, in, in the book. It talks about the layers and how we are building lay. Um, how how we are building our plots in in R, and we use ggplot to uh, to 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 help us uh, doing this. So at first we have a lot of layers in a um, couple of layers in uh, yeah in uh, in ggplot too. So okay, it's, it's the same problem as last night. Okay. So the first layer is the data set. This is it it's say itself, the, the main thing that we are feeding to our plot. Um, then the layer of aesthetics, which is, um, so aesthetics, yeah, let's I'm talk. A, um, what is this? Is following your cursor. <laughs> you have something interesting. What? What is this following your cursor? Cursor, I can see some light, like, you know, while you are pointing. I don't see anything. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like your your cursor and uh, cursor that you are pointing, like I can see, like it has some kind of, you know, um, uh, is it? Um, it doesn't oh. have. Anything. Okay. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Go on. So I I, I still didn't use the um, the the marker yet. So yeah. Yes, without the marker, but it's showing something interesting, like you know, in yeah. You just go on, continue. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So, so the first layer we talked about is data, and then the second layer is aesthetics. Aesthetics in English means uh, beautiful or beauty visuals, or be beautiful uh, in general. And uh, on ggplot2, uh, the main idea of aesthetics is uh, is the mapping between the the visual the visual attributes and um, the variables that we have in our data set. So this is aesthetics. That's just the mapping the, that we do that we are doing to uh, to our visual attributes uh, to cor to its corresponding data or variable. And um, we will talk more about the aesthetics and how it's uh, how it's used. Um, third layer is ge geometries, which is a geometric object uh, to be specific which is like uh, the, the type of plot, the visual element itself. Um, uh, and it's, it, it could be like the power plot, scatter plot, um, um, line plot, or any kind of plot. Um, the facets in this, uh, this fourth layer is the facet, which is like how to, um, we talked about the facet in, in chapter two, uh, but Mainly, is we just splitting our main uh, uh, our main plot into smaller plots, um, and we talk more uh, when we get into it. Uh, statistic is the statistical just statistics term transformation after we doing the faceting. If we if we have, want to do it, of course, and the coordinate system, which is 
um, it's something that uh, we don't see it that much in the, uh, we don't use it that much regularly, but it's very useful if we want to have some kind of uh, different data, which is like spatial data or um, geographic data or any type of uh, data that's not normal. So we don't, we will talk briefly on this one. And the last one that it doesn't mean the doesn't mention it in uh, in our book, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's it's not just to give a flavor of style to our uh, our blots, which is the seam. And I don't think we will talk about the seam. So it's he, he just added here that to know that there is uh, a layer that doesn't mention in the book, so it's good. Um, so let's let's continue. So, so so this is the brief list of the seven um, seven layers of, um, uh, of of plotting or visualizing in uh, in uh, in R in ggplot two. So let's go talk about the aesthetic mapping, which is the second layer because this first layer we don't have anything to talk about. So um, the aesthetics which is, as I mentioned before, is the, the mapping between the visual elements or the visual um, uh, visual um, attributes uh, to the visual, uh, the, the, the corresponding data variables. So let's see here, we will talk, we will get into the, the MPG, which is like um, a manufacturer for cars, some, something like that. Um, let's see the source because it's, Go back. Yeah. So. So this is the the, the data set that we were working on, just briefly. Um, MPG data frame that is bundled with ggplot2, which is existed in ggplot. Um, contains two uh, two hundred and thirty four observation collected by U.S. Environment and Protection Agency on thirty. Eight car models. Um, so we have the manufacturer, the model, the displacement, uh, the year, the cylinder. Um, what else? Trans transformation, transportation. I think dry, dry, drive, city, highway. Uh, I don't remember the, the list, but we will mainly use the highway and drive, displacement, and the class. So. Let's uh, let's let's see what we have. So, first thing, we yeah, let's see this one. Let's see the visuals. Okay, so we have in this this aesthetics. The aesthetics part, we have like multiple aesthetics uh, when we talking about the data itself. So this is the first first layer that we hear, uh, or the second layer, sorry. Um, we just mapping the, the, the data set, and then we're using the aesthetic function, which is a function that do is a mapping, like this is the implementation of the mapping that I talked about. And we have like two default, which is X and Y, or sorry, two required uh, variables that we have to pass in this to this function, which is x and y, and other like most of the others uh, others is optional. You could have it or not. So here we have like um, the x for displacement, the y for a highway, um, like uh, like the efficiency of fuel in, in the highway. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's short for that for highway. So, um, and the color uh, class. So we color by class. So you just in x axis displacement, in the y axis highway, and the color it we color it by classes. So here this is the one that uh, first one. The the x y is displacement. The y is the y axis is uh, is the highway, and the classes is do see it come back to my size and all this. Um, so the optional, uh, the color is optional. The shape here also is optional. Let's see the second one is optional. And 
uh, just a note here. We talked about uh, that the shape, the shape uh, aesthetic when we add it into aesthetic, uh, it has a limitation, some kind of limitation, which is six, just six discrete values. You can't have more than uh, than this. If you could define it, I think, but uh, he didn't mention how to define more shapes than six. So mainly, if you use if you use shape uh, in as a as aesthetics, you have to be careful when you uh, if you have discrete variables that doesn't have ordinality or some kind of order or ranking. Because if it, if it doesn't have if it doesn't have ranking, then it will it will probable to be to, to be uh, the the values become very different and various and could be more than 10, 11, uh, 20. So it's it will the types will be more than uh, six, of course. So uh, just shape before you use the shape type. This is uh, the limitation for the shape. But other than that, it, uh, it's working well. And here we show, we see that uh, this is a six, six different shape, but the seven is, doesn't exist. And he, he tells us here uh, a warning about this. Um, so similarly, we can map class to size. And Ahmed, yeah. you know, this GGP, uh, ggplot, I saw that, you know, that in Python, they have this replica of ggplot, right? Just implementation of this R. Do you know that? No, I didn't know that. It, they uh -huh. are, are, are it like uh, famous because I don't hear about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you Google, you see it sometimes, you know, ggplot, but in, in Python, yeah, just continue, just to let you know. Oh, nice. So I will check it out there, sure. Because it's, um, I think ggplot is also, it's, it's just like automating a lot of stuff, manual stuff. With, with Bison, and you do Bison. I I write a lot of stuff in Matplotlib or or Seaborn. So yeah, it will be very useful for us. So similarly, we can map uh, class to size or alpha. Like alpha is transparency, of course, and um, the size is uh, is um, is uh, like the size of uh, of the of the element. And of course, here we, we're talking about the size of the scatter plot. Scatter plot is points, so it's the size of points. And the alpha is the transparency of points. Like the dense, the, the dense of soft, dense of soft. Um, we see it here, we could see it here. This is the size uh, aesthetic, and here is the dense, our alpha aesthetic. And it's, it, does, it doesn't have, like, like alpha is, is kind of hard if to, to design a plot with it because it's, um, it's it, do, it doesn't have the, um, it's, it's not violent or um, visual enough uh, to see the, the, the data clearly. Um, so yeah, it, but we could use it in some, uh, in some use cases, but uh, yeah, like not much. Um, so yeah, this is about the aesthetics, like the alpha, the size, and the the shape and color. Um, of course, you can have multiple like multiple aesthetics. Uh, I think there is also a, a stroke aesthetic and one one other. I don't remember it, but uh, like one the stroke aesthetic is also exists. Um, yeah, so this is about aesthetics, uh, what, what type of aesthetics and how it is visualized in, in the graph. Um, both, okay, both of these produce warning as well. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Um, the class is, um, here it says it's mapping a non ordinal uh, discrete categorical variables like class uh, to an ordered aesthetic, which is size or alpha, because it's really dependent on the order. Um, is generally not a good idea because in size there is a ranking and we don't having we don't have a ranking in, in this uh, in, in non ordinal categorical It just discrete values different uh, and just have order. Um, so yeah, this is this one and here we could have mass class to alpha aesthetic which controls the transparency. Okay, you talk about that. Um, once you map aesthetic ggplot two takes takes care of the rest, 
you select a reasonable scale to use with the aesthetic and it constructs a legend of course uh, the x and y you can see it here the, the name of the variable like here and here um yeah and uh that explains the mapping between level and values yeah for x and y aesthetic create a legend of all this. Um, the axis, the axis line acts as a legend. It explains the mapping between location and that. So we can also set aesthetic properties for your geom manually. For example, we can uh, make all of this, uh, all, all of the points uh, in our plot. Yeah. Look. So aesthetic is not like uh, specific for uh, for the first layer, just the first layer. But we're using the aesthetic for uh, if before you do the plot itself or the, or the size of the position that we want, the aesthetic will. Uh, we could also use the aesthetic inside the the, the distribution or geomet geomet uh, the, the geometric object, and we'd see this uh, because uh, aesthetic itself it's just as, as we said it's just a mapping between the visual element and the. Uh, uh, the visual attributes and, uh, and the, data, the data variable. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, like specifically in a, in a specific order that you, you don't, you have to do it at first. No, it's, uh, you can add it in every layer of the, if the plots that we, that we talked about seven layers. So we have, you can, you could add the data on top of, uh, uh, the, the aesthetic in, in, in geometry node in, or geometric um, objects. And also we could add it in, uh, I think it's uh, the first one, what is called the first one, uh, the statistical, the facets. Yeah, the, but, but mainly we will use it in the geometric, um, yeah, geometric objects mainly. So yeah, it's, um, here we just uh, specify the aesthetic of color, the blue. So we just mainly uh, bluish do, do the blue color for all for every point. We don't here um, specify it for a specific uh, variable, like we did in uh, other. Uh, like if we did color here, color blue, it, it will he will not understand it it's because. Aesthetic function here need a mapping between the variable, the data variable, and um, or sorry, the the visual attribute. This is x is the visual attribute, and the the data variable which is uh, the displacement and so on and so forth. So if we did like color blue, color equal blue here, it, it will he will not understand it, and we'd say he will for, for sure he will visualize it. Uh, we would say here that uh, there, uh, the column named blue and is, uh, and, uh, and and that's it. He will he will not implement it. So yeah, yeah. But can we use the color equals to blue outside the aesthetic, but within the same ggplot uh, function within the same ggplot function um, after MPG and a, a, yeah something like that? Can we have that? Uh huh. Oh yeah, no, no, you can can do it. Um, I think because mainly the the blast operator here is about it's is specific for ggplot that we we extend the functionality of ggplot, so it's it doesn't. Um, yeah, here we are specifying the aesthetic without knowing yet how we will uh, we will. Um, like blot it. We don't specify the distribution. So I think you couldn't do this and unless is it's in aesthetic because it's uh, it's a mapping, the mapping happening in aesthetics. And we could see it in this. Let's see. Okay. Mama? Mama? So here is data and mapping. Um, so we we don't have 
yeah, we don't have like um, the color argument here. Okay, okay, cool, cool, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't happen. So we have the mapping and the data, the data and the mapping, and some, I think, other argument passed on the method not currently used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but mainly the environment also, yeah. And the mapping and the data. So the mapping is the aesthetics that we talked about, and uh, the data is here, um, but you can't use it outside. You can, you can use it inside. Um, So let's continue. Um, also, there here we talked about the, this R has 25 built-in shapes that are identified by numbers, and we could use it. We use them when we go when we want to add shapes to a specific um, uh, shape uh, values. And there are some some semi like uh, this. There are some semi duplicates for for example from zero to to 15 and 22 are all squares like 0 15 and 22 there's all squares but is the difference is this this is filled and this is filled with color red okay um and the hollow yeah the difference comes from the interactions color and fill yeah the color and fill aesthetics fill is aesthetic also um uh, the hollow shapes from 0 to 14 have a border the, uh, determined by the color, like from zero and 14, where, yeah, all this kind of thing, the, 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 just a border without a filled color. Um, the filled shapes from 21 and 24 have a border of color and are filled with fill, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, you can learn more. He, he, he left here a, a link for, um, Aesthetic specification. I think they they talk more about the, what aesthetics, and I learned more about the aesthetics from it. Uh, aesthetics for every um, every function and aesthetics uh, and how to define it in every function. The documentation in the documentation of ggplot2. Um, okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we have an exercise, but it's, um, I did the exercise actually, but I don't see it here, don't know why. Um, okay, so let's continue because of the time. A geo the geometric object or uh, the, geom the, um, the distribution or the type of the plot itself um, is the second, or uh, sorry, this is the third layer that we have. And the third layer after the aesthetic. So we defining the geometric point here, uh, the geometric smooth. The geometric point is a scatter plot. The geometric smooth is just a line plot, um, smooth line plot, of course. Um, so here is the, the scatter scatter plot, and here is the line plot. Um, and here also, um, what is the difference? Uh, yeah, here we are using the aesthetic of shape and line type and shape it doesn't do anything here because uh, shape it in when when the line there is no point with from doing the shape with the line when you do the line um yes it's, it's right yeah this one this is the correct one um when you do the line and you do shapes the it doesn't have the aesthetic of shapes so a specific aesthetics are assigned to a specific distribution or geometric node. So geomet geometric objects. So you have to check before you use each aesthetic for each uh, geometric uh, object, because there is a specifics, uh, there is specific aesthetics for specific uh, geometric objects. Um, like like what what here explained shape is not existing for geometric smooth uh, because this is a line plot is doesn't have shapes he have he has a, a, an aesthetic which is line type which is uh, the same the shapes of, type of shape also but this different naming 
uh, and here is you see the this is the dotted and more the dotted but it's extended and the line itself so this is the th line type uh, for of course geometric smooth um, let's see what else yeah, here he doing uh, he, he comparing what you see. Okay, this is the line plot. The second line plot is um, is is using the aesthetic of group to the drive, aesthetic of group to the drive. This mapping also inside the geometric smooth uh, geometric of geometric uh, object. Of course, I I will I will just say it's it, it just the line block. So inside the line block, the aesthetic of uh, we map the group to drive. This is this is the the the, the result. Um, I think it's, it's just group multiple. Um, yeah, the the group. I I don't really know what the group do did. Like, is it like is it aggregating based on the Based on the the drive, I, I don't remember to be honest. So, it's just an aesthetic visual element to to it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, let's continue. Uh, the 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 G plot. What what else? What he did uh, differently? Yeah, the, the color. Okay, the, he he just added the color, and show legend is false. Okay, so he just. Add the color so the to the the geometric smooth. So we just he, he show you that he's showing you that um, we could use aesthetic inside the um, the geometric object or the, the 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 plot itself, the distribution that we specified, and that's that's what I talked about. So no man. So if you place mapping in GM function. Ggplot will treat them as a local mapping for the layer. It will use this mapping to extend or override the global the global mapping for that layer only. So he here we we're talking about what how how ggplot are, are behind the scene is working. So when you do mapping like um, this one, when you do aesthetics like uh, and we, you do aesthetic at, at the end of the layers, okay? So we have the first layer, which is the, the, the data itself. We have the second layer, adding the aesthetic and applying the gplot function. And we extend it by the third layer, which is the, the geometric object. Here we have like, um, Let's say if we have like a, a, um, a geometric, we have three layers, okay? So these are the three layers. Okay, so this is our, our data and then these, these are the aesthetic and this is our um, um, yeah, you hear me, Chan? Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you well. Yeah. My internet is, you know, <laughs> being, yeah, yeah, being, yeah. I just got disconnected, but I'm okay now. Yeah. So I was talking about um, how. Ggplot are are um, doing overriding, so I, I I didn't explain it yet. So Ggplot are applying aesthetics here by overriding the aesthetics that the the that happened before. So this is this concept of overriding aesthetics or overriding functionality is, the, is, the, is more about is coming from of course. Is coming from um, the, the object orientation design pattern or design. Object orientation design is called uh, having a pillar, have a pillar which called uh, inheritance. So um, apparent 
like uh, or child inherit a lot of uh, its functionality and attributes and traits characteristics from its parents so here and still the child itself if, if we think of, of it, about it he he gained a lot of diff unique characteristics that the differentiate him from his parents his parents and this characteristic can override the what he, he already inherited from his parent and that's what happening here the functionality of aesthetics are if we did coloring here for for example and the aesthetic is um if we do coloring here and then we do a little uh, after it we do coloring as uh, inside the geometric the, the the dependency uh, bec uh, or the sorry the, the general I, the generalized uh, will get overriding or overridden because we talked about a general like let me sim simplify it more like we have a general okay let's let's yeah this is this is, this is our the data and then the aesthetic and the uh, ge the geometry. Okay, so aesthetic have some kind of functionality and traits. If if we add the geometrics that have the same functionality, the the order of priorities will or implementation will go and uh, from geometric and implement it and or override override the aesthetic properties. Uh, so if uh, if this geometric have aesthetics and the in this the second layer will get operating because uh, the zoom the the idea of inheritance that's uh, talked about so yeah let's see good yeah. okay so yeah, I think this is how it's work in behind the scene because it's the, I see it, yeah. also. and also it's uh, I don't know why it, it doesn't mention that uh, the plus operator here is um, is a special operator. It's, it doesn't like it's, it's not in R. It's specific for ggplot. Oh really? And, yeah, it's um, ah it's specific for ggplot to extend its functionality and build okay. the layer up. Um, okay, I thought like it's just the um, plus that you're adding the adding plus, you know. <laughs> yeah, and adding plus is right, it's operator, but it's a specific operator that do like operator overloading or something like that. And inside our, I think inside the, um, uh, the implementation of the project itself, uh, and it works only, I think, or it works in this, in this scenario, which where we're building up layers upon layers upon layers because uh, because the implementation of ggplot and I think it works also with aesthetics. We could do this also with aesthetics. Um, I read about this, so it's uh, yeah. And okay, thank you for this good information. Um, this is the first time I <laughs> have it. Thank you. Yeah. This, uh, this is what we talked about, and here, yeah, it's, what are we doing here? Yeah, we're doing the aesthetic again, but we're adding the, the line beside the aesthetic of G-point, just to show that here the plus operator is adding um, is adding a line after line, uh, or adding a layer after layer. So we just having the data and the aesthetic of the data defined, then we uh, we plot the data with the ge ge geom point, which is the point here. And then after it, and we, you can see it, uh, that uh, the line is, uh, is, the top, is the top layer, like it's, uh, it's having in the top, in the front. Uh, and the, the, the dot is, uh, is behind. You could see it if you focus on the line itself and you see it it's just override if everything uh um everything he uh, in the in the plot itself so that's that's the idea of layering um okay so we can also specify different data for different layers um 
Yeah, we talked about this here. We use red points as well as open circle to highlight two seaters cars. Okay, see it. And yeah, the, the local data argument. Okay, James Moss. So here we, yeah, he use here filtering. So it's, he can use filter inside the geom, uh, geom point or any type of uh, geometric objects. Um, data here is filtered by class of two seaters. So, and and he he assigns a color of red to it. And I think um, you can do this without aesthetic. We talked uh, like we can't do this in inside the ggplot itself, but we can do it here in the in the geometric object itself, because the geometric object, uh, if if we did this, we are specifying for the uh, for this geometric object to become all all red. Like we don't have to specify like a kind of red uh, or uh, based on a variable or a data. No, it, you just all all the data that's coming from that's why data here is, is exist because it, it does it just give it the data and then fill, uh, here it was of course is filtering it but you can give it the data and then um be uh, enforce a color to be red for color to be, get, to be red it doesn't have to be with aesthetic um uh, here and here he bought he built three three scatter plot the first one just to show the data of all the data and then uh, the second one to show this filtered data and third one, what he did in the third one. oh yeah he, he did another scatter plot for the same um yeah for the same uh filter but with the circle open shape uh, and the color red it's same so that's just to have and of course you have the size of three to to deviate from the, the, the red point, the second one. And you see it here, and you could use it here to, to, um, to identify um, um, sub, sub elements or sub, sub category uh, in your plots and show it in the in your plot size. Yeah, it's very useful. This one is very useful. Um, okay. So the histogram and density plot. Okay, so that the histogram and density plot uh, below reveals that the distribution of highway millage is by by model and right skew, stride skewed and box skewed. Okay, so, so here we sh he shows um, more geometric objects, more type of geometric objects, which is geom histogram, which is geom uh, density, and geom box plot. And you can see it here. Yeah, the, the box, the, the histogram and the density are having two peaks, so it's the same. And the box plot, of course, we can use. I use this box plot for outlier, uh, identifying outlier uh, in, in the data set. Uh, you use it like uh, you have the maximum and the minimum and the median uh, and uh, anything above it, uh, it become like, um, and I think the maximum here, like, and uh, yeah, I think the maximum is here. And this is like the, what is called the Q, the quarter, quarter uh, um, the range, what is called the range uh, calculated from here. Do you remember, you remember Chan, the, the um, the what? The interquartile range or something like that. Yeah, it is three O of O something like that. I cannot remember exactly. Yeah, and it's it's three. I yeah, it's three. I think. But yeah, yeah it's, it's used in uh, to identify outliers. And outliers, could, yes. And you could use it in SQL also. If you if you know SQL, you can you could use, yes, like have the formula and uh, like the. Uh, um, Calculates the intercontinent range. Inter name that. Oh, IQR. Yes. Um, yeah, so here, G plus two provide more than 40 geons, of course, but uh, these don't cover all possible plots. 
one could make uh, if you need a different new mental good extension. So there's a there's a lot of style uh, blocks out there, and Geom is a block. So just to make sure that you are uh, here, if if you don't see the the if you make don't make use of the 40 Geom. You can mm -hmm. have already implemented stuff in, in extension packages, and you could use it. Uh, you could see it here. There is a lot. I think uh, there is also an animation here. Uh, you could see see how you could in uh, a package that could animate your uh, your visual. So it could be very useful uh, if you want to like interact with the but show animation in the well. uh, Yeah. I want to try it. So uh, it's uh, okay. Awesome. So the best place to it compile view of GOMG plot offers as okay. Yeah, this is the reference page. Okay, so let's move to the the fourth layer, which is the facet. We talked about the facet in um, in, Duct, in chapter two. Here we are more like to 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 know just how uh, how to use facets with multiple variables because we know it's how to use one variable and um, the one variable it has to be a special variable uh, we just split the plot in top plot depending on the one now in, in this case here we do use a different facet trap to um, to do the first and this is a formula of course I think uh Shan, you talk yeah about um that. I can I can your voice goes down I can hear you a bit do you hear me so I can hear you yeah I can hear you okay, okay. Yes. So uh, I was asking you if uh, if you already like um, explained this in in chapter two, uh, the facet trap function, and the formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I cannot um, talk much, but um, uh, it just um, you know when you want to have each variable to have. To be on it is on plot so you just use this first lab and this formula um but also um there is another one um not first lab what is it called facet, facet grid yes yes facet grid so facet grid if you want to put them uh if you have two variables you want to put them separately uh then you can do that as well uh, yeah. so what's the, your question is yeah, yeah i was i was asking if you uh, if you explain this in chapter two because chapter to have faceting in yeah 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 we explained this yeah so yeah that, that's what like what you said if it's uh, just um it's, we have two function and every function have uh the, fu the first functions and uh the thing is you could you could use i think with facet trap um two variables not just one but it it's kind of confusing because you have like on top of each other, like two types on top of each other. Mm -hmm. like, we, like here you could see it if if we did let's let's here we could we could have the facet with with two variable, but it's, it's come some kind of confusing because you see the the two variable and the two scales and yeah the points so it's somehow confu could confuse the um, the the one that seeing this so mm -hmm. yeah you just i think stick for if if it's one variable just use the facet trap if it's if it's two variables just use the facet grid and the facet grid is uh, mainly is for uh, just use the, the scale itself and um 
the scaling for uh, the corresponding x axis and y axis and um we just do the the, the first one this the drive here and the, the the cylinder here in the y uh just respectively just like x here is displacement and y here is a uh, highway um but yeah it's uh it, it you it could you could use it to do multivariate analysis to show uh, a lot of categorical variable plus um like two two categorical variable plus um two catec uh, two numerical variables um in the same plot and I think yeah, it's it's useful, and it's at the same plot. It's it it could be um, good to identify also uh, our um, like categorize uh, data itself. This categorize the data to certain um, categories. Um, yeah. So this is about fastening. It's just there's two functions. It, it it talked about the two functions, uh, facet grade and facet wrap. Um, the statistical transformation is the uh, is this is the layer what's the fourth force or fifth if i think the fifth layer and it here we show that if we in the in the aesthetic if you add um, the x-axis to cut for the diamond that i said for example and you just did this and without doing the y-axis it, it by default it will have the statistic of count Added to as a y variable, and it it will get uh, it will it will aggregate based on the cut uh, or based on the variable that you provided to it. And aggregation here, uh, because it's a default, and the statistical transformation is the count is uh, as as the count is the default. We see here the count in the y axis and um, the cut is uh, in the x axis. As the same, it's it's uh, the cut itself is a um, is a categorical variable, so we count the categorical variable and are adding up in uh, to the predict um, uh, bar chart like this. Um, yeah, and here we he he explains. I think he he just explains that um, uh, that we we get the different type uh, the. He calculated the count first for each for each type of cut and like the fair, the good, the very good, premium, and ideal. He calculates the count uh, and how it's calculated is just like aggregating or summing uh, when he found a, a specific category and add it up until he has the final values. And when he he had the final values and the same proportion. He, he just has the, the count in the y axis and the, the cut in the x axis. And then he, he just draws the, based on the, on the count, he draws the, the chart or the, the bars. Um, we, yeah, we can learn which stat GM uses by inspecting the default. Yes, we could use this, for example, like if we did GM bar. Here we could see the default values. Here's the default stat. Here is the count, and we could you could see it also. I think there is a lot. Yeah, this example also. So yeah, but the main thing is the default for I I think for almost all uh, geometric object is, is the count. As is the default for all. Um, so yeah. Okay. We might yeah we might want to override the default. Yes, we can we can override the default from transformed variable to aesthetic. For example, you might to display a chart of proportion rather than counts. Okay. So we can. And after that, this is this function is really interesting because. It it uh, let, let, let's see our let's see our its documentation because it's very interesting. It just be, before yeah most aesthetic are mapped for variable found in data and sometimes however you want to do it. yeah it's it, it do some kind of delaying of uh, 
statistical transformation until it's uh, the, the, the default is already calculated. So it doesn't replace the default, it's added to it, it add to it. Um, which is like, if you, if you want to know how to, how, how to do it, let's see. Let's see here the example. It's after stat props. So the props is exist in the diamond, I think. Um, and the group one, I don't know what is group one. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's aesthetic also. Yeah, yeah, it's excess aesthetic also, yeah. The aesthetic of group, the one that I don't remember how it's work, but I think it's it just say that it's, it's just one group uh, and the proportion uh, is done after the aesthetic is, ca is calculated or after the, tra the default transform statistical transformation is calculated and the default is uh, the count because the default is the count. Um, the prop when it, it, uh, it it, it did it, it like do the the proportion the proper the, the, the probably I think the proportional uh which is the, the stats right yeah yeah it's, it's a proportional so after the if he he, he did the he do the uh, the count he he apply after uh, on top of it the proportional so mm -hmm. he gets a proportion. I think it's, we could see it here. Um, if we get the proportion of those, we will get those. I think this. Um, so yeah, it's it's coming. It's, he, he said after start because it's, it's delaying. That, that's what he, he said here. You want to delay the mapping until later in, in the rendering process. Uplot has three stages of data that we can map aesthetic from yeah so it's just the 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 the, the process of delaying is so interesting because it's uh, it it makes you more ha have more uh, control uh, on on the mapping so you don't know don't just have to uh, to execute the mapping when you type it and i think there is a lot of function like this but i don't know from where oh yeah there here it is after scale, same same thing. It just after uh, when I think it, it talked about the scale property of uh, of the geometric object. Uh, and I, I don't remember how how it's how it's doing it. But yeah. Okay, so we might want to draw. Do you have any question here? No, no, I'm okay. Okay. So we might, we might want to draw greater attention to its statistical transformation in your code. Okay. Yeah, he talked here about the stat summary, to, which you could use it with um, with the aesthetic to the data set. I think that this is, uh, yeah, it, it's not related like specifically to ggplot, but, but it, it, uh, it integrates with it very nicely. So, here we do, do the stat summary to uh, have the minimum and the maximum, and then calculate the median. And we show the median by uh, this, uh, this point. Uh, and the point itself is, um, uh, is calculated by the stat summary. Um, so why, why is, okay. Yeah, he just said that as uh, that summary is really useful and you could use it, the UI values for each unique X value to draw the attention. So yeah, um, here ggplot provide more than 20 stats. Yes, and for you to use each stat is a function. So you can get help in the usual way that then uh, any stat function, you can use the, 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 the question mark and know that uh, it's documentation, show the documentation. Here, second thing, it's uh, talked about the position, position adjustments, which is a way to um, tweak, I think, tweaking uh, the aesthetic. Uh, and here you show uh, two, stat, two, two different uh, G, G plot. Yeah, the first one is, um, just draws uh, the x as a cut 
and then he, he has the color aesthetic. The color aesthetic is is about is also cut. He maps the cut two times, and because he maps the cut two times, I think here also it becomes a the count because we don't provide uh, the y value, so it's it will uh, apply the count. Um, Okay, so yeah, I will try to wrap it up very quickly. So, um, so this is, I think, the the, the um, it's pretty obvious. the The main thing is the color is uh, it, it's just the border. We coloring the border, and the fill fill aesthetic will uh, fill all the all the bars. Okay, and. Same thing here. We we do the but it, we we talked about here. We he talked about the stacked bar chart and uh, how fill is used to to do this. Um, what else? So here also we talked. He talked about different option. The position the position argument in the static. Um, we use it. We could use it to have different uh, like tweaks to. How we can you how how our how we showing the, our plots? So here we talk, he talked about the, the alpha and the the, the uh, what is called uh, yeah the alpha and fill if if it's a fill in a if it's alpha is a half um, and here is jettering and last last thing. Uh, is a coordinate system, and this is one. It's uh, he doesn't talk too much about this one, but mainly he talked that we could for uh, we have a, a lot of different systems that we could use for different data, and uh, like here coordinate map for 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 maps, here coordinate puller for just like um, radar things or something, and all here the the main thing is. Um, the coordinate Cartesian, the coordinate fakes, Philip, and uh, the trans. Um, it, it's not that like, yeah, it could be helpful, but it's not that important for us to now. But yeah, I think this is this is it. I think uh, we we can we could wrap this up and um, finish here because um, the coordinate system itself, it's uh, it doesn't like I, I don't understand it very well, so I can't. Uh, <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay all right um thank you Ahmad. thank you very much i think um i will chat to you with you and also i will contact maybe we can shift our time to an hour back so that it can be uh, better for all of us and like especially yeah all right thank Enjoy you very time. much for this presentation awesome thank you see you next week bye-bye bye bye, -bye. bye.